precious memory. How many of us can just remember? You ought to take a moment to just remember and reflect on where God bought you from. And when you think about it, I want to tell you, if you got a praise in you, you ought to let it out. You ought to let it out. If you got a praise in you, you ought to let it out. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. Brought me from a mighty long way. Mm. Mm. Somebody said if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I'm glad I'm not on his side because I'll let him down. I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. It's always to, it's good to remember from whence you came. And even though that you wasn't back there, some of us weren't even born in the 60s and the 50s and the 40s. But I want to tell you, you ought to know the struggle. And sometimes we won't take life for granted. And the privileges that we have now, we won't take it for granted. Because I want to tell you, our foreparents and our forefathers have struggled. That we may have the rights and the privileges that we have today. Uh, matter of fact, I told told him Wednesday, one Wednesday night. I'm, I was born in the '60s, early early '60s. But I'm, I'm glad I wasn't back there because they would have killed me. Amen. Back in the day, I was just straight crazy. Amen. Would act a fool in a minute, say anything without thinking about it. So God, God knew what He was doing. He let me come in the next generation so that I could be here today to just preach his word. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because, uh, man, the stuff that my foreparents went through and the struggles, I thank God that they just took it. And they took it because they had us in mind. Amen. If you notice in your bulletin, this is part two. We began a series uh, last Sunday, and we're going to walk you through this. Uh, I want you to just reach over and touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're going deeper today. Amen. Last Sunday, I just introduced the text to you, but today we're going a little deeper, and next Sunday we'll go even deeper. Amen. As it relates to what uh, this text is really trying to say to us now, if this, if this is... Your first Sunday here, this is, you didn't get part one, I always tell you, catch on where you can. Amen. I wish I could go back and bring you up, but I'm not going to go back and uh, talk about all the stuff I talked about last Sunday. Uh, but I'm just going to start where we are and keep pushing. Amen. As I always say, holler at your boy. Touch your neighbor and say, holler at the preacher. Amen. I'm, I'm reading out of the New King James Version's. Uh, St. Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse 22, if you can stand for the reading of God's word. St. Luke chapter 8, verse 22, and, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Now it happened on a certain day that he, being Jesus, got into a boat with his disciples. And he said unto them, and this is very key, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water. 
they were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And here the question is right here that I want to lift. But he said unto them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and they marveled saying one to another, who can this be? Or well, he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this praise and worship experience. God, we thank you for your presence. And God, we pray now for our preaching power. Speak, Lord, in this place. Your people are listening. And God, it is our prayer that this word today will convict us. This word will challenge us, change and convert us to having faith in you. God, I just pray now that you would anoint me as your speaker and I pray that you would anoint the hearer. And Lord, as we hear it, we'll receive it and apply it to our lives. I pray that this word will revive us again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now clap your hands for what he's getting ready to tell you. Come on, clap your hands. I want you to go back to verse 25 as we raise this question today. And he said unto them, where is your faith? That's the question that I want to continue to lift in this series of sermons. Where is your faith? When we read this text, and when we read these few verses, verses 22 through 25, The one thing in these few verses that really stands out, there's one thing in these few verses that we cannot bypass or we cannot overlook. If when we read these few verses, if there's one thing out of these few verses that should prick the heart, of every reader and every hearer, it is the question that Jesus lifts in verse 25. Out of all that's being said, he turns to his disciples and he says to them, where is your faith? Are y'all going to help me? It is Jesus who asks this question. And Jesus uh, being the Messiah, Jesus asked the question who was uh, their mentor, Jesus, who asked the question who was their master. And he simply turns to them and says, what happened to your faith? If you notice in the text, he asks this question to his disciples. And the word disciple suggests that Jesus was talking to his followers. This question this morning is directed to the church, the body of Christ, this this question is raised in the mind of the servants of Jesus. These disciples were 
following Christ and they were servants of his. But here in this text, he's asked them, where is your faith? And we, we understand that in this chapter, chapter 8 of Luke, Jesus and his followers, they were going about doing ministry. Jesus and these 12 men were not only going about doing ministry, but these men, they were working miracles. Not only were they doing ministry and working miracles, Miracles, but I found out that Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Just, just so that you don't think I'm making this up, look at verse 1. All right. When you look at verse 1 in chapter 8, the Bible says that it came to pass that after he went through every city and village, preaching, bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve was with him. So Jesus and his disciples were going from place to place. Uh, they were doing ministry, working miracles, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Are y'all in here? Well, but in this text, Jesus confronts his followers. He confronts his disciples with a simple, profound, but yet probing question. Uh -huh. Are y'all in here? Yes, and, 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 and this question that Jesus confronts th them with, it actually concerns their faith. All right. I'm going somewhere if you stay with me. So he says to them, where is your faith? Right. Now, now, when I kept uh, reading that question over and over again, Jesus was really saying, what happened to your faith? Uh -huh. You once had it, but somewhere it's gone. Yeah. Right. You, you've lost what you once had. I'm going somewhere. My brothers and sisters, these disciples, these 12 men that were following Christ, I have to believe that they were men of faith. Well, 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 because I feel safe in saying that they were men of faith because when Jesus got ready to start his public ministry, it was Jesus who called them to discipleship. He called them to follow him. Uh -huh. Have I got a witness? Right. And when Jesus had begun to call these men to follow him, nowhere in scripture I found out where Jesus had to explain to them who he was. Are y'all going to help me in here? He, he didn't even explain to these 12 men where he was going. He didn't explain to them the work that was involved. He simply said, follow me. And so, so you don't know who he is. You don't know where he's going. You don't know the work involved. And if you follow Christ, you have to follow him by faith. the Bible says, and I want to show you, if you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4, what I really want to sh teach you today, that when Jesus said, follow me, it was without question. It was without hesitation. It was without reservation. They didn't even question Jesus. The Bible said that they just followed him. Go, go to Matthew chapter 4. Maybe it's too cold. Y'all might have quiet this morning. We need to turn the heat up in here. Go to Matthew chapter 4. And somewhere around verse 18. 
Matthew chapter 4. And verse 18, and this is what the word says. Now Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. He saw them and they were fishing. And when Jesus came by in verse 19, he simply said unto them, follow me. And I'll make you fishers of men. And you can't overlook verse 20 because there's a word there. And the Bible says immediately they left their nets and followed him. They didn't question who he was. They didn't question where he was going. They didn't even say, what do you want us to do? The Bible said, he simply said, follow me. And I have to believe they did it by faith. And Jesus in, in verse 21 in the Bible says, and, and going on from there, he saw two other brothers. James, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother in the boat with Zebedee, their father. They were mending their nets. And watch this. He called them. And in verse 22, there that word is again. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. I wish we would be so quick to follow Jesus. When Jesus is telling us to do something, we got 20 questions about what he want us to do. Because most of us, when we can't see the end from the beginning, we are slowful about following uh, the Bible and following the things of Christ. Help me, Lord Jesus. And so my, my brothers and sisters and the Bible said that when he called these men to discipleship, they didn't question Jesus. The Bible says immediately they quit what they were doing. They followed him. Are y'all in here? The Bible, I have to believe that these men were men of faith. The Bible teaches us that we who are disciples, and the word disciple really means follower of Christ. We who are saved and we who are workers in the kingdom of God, workers of ministry uh -huh. I'm going somewhere if we're going to follow Christ, be his disciples, if we're going to be live a saved life and embrace Christianity and do the work of ministry, what this text is trying to tell us is that you cannot do it without faith Help me, Lord Jesus. Faith is important. Matter of fact, faith is imperative. Faith is vital in the life of a believer. You, you can't live this life without faith. Can I get a witness? You, you cannot follow Christ and you cannot work in ministry without faith because I, I, I've learned something, my brothers and sisters. This Bible says that we walk by faith. Not by sight. As a matter of fact, I kept reading about faith, and one, one writer says, The just shall live by faith. I kept reading about faith, and then another writer came along, and he said that without faith, it is impossible to please God. I need to tell you today that there are a lot of folk who are sitting up in church that we are living without faith. I'm going somewhere. I've learned something. Why do I need faith? Because faith, what it does, it helps me understand that whatever I'm going through, Catch this. Trouble don't last always. 
faith helps me to know that whatever, whenever I'm in a storm, help me, Lord Jesus. Faith helps me to know, help me, Lord, that there's a brighter day ahead somewhere. Faith helps me to understand that when it don't look good, it's going to work to my good. Faith helps me to know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If you didn't catch all of that, I call, I'm going to catch this. Faith helps me to know that God is able. When I can't see how I'm going to get out of this storm, how I'm going to get through this storm, faith helps me know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that he may ask or think. Is there anybody here standing on the ableness of God, what God is able to do? And somebody here, you ought to praise God because he's able. You may still be in it, but you ought to praise him because he's able. Which simply means I know, even though if he don't do it, I know he can. Let me, let, can I talk about us? He says, where is your faith? I've come to learn, and I've been in this, 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 I've been in the church all of my life. I've come to learn that most of us if not all of us, we just talk faith. We really don't have it. We just talk faith. We, we, you know, it sounds good when you're just talking. Because I got faith as long as everything in my life is going well. As long as everybody happy. As long as everybody healthy, as long as we are prospering, all the bills are paid, everything is all right. We 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 we'll come up here and testify. My faith is in God. But we're just like these twelve men in the text when the storm came. Help me, Lord Jesus. We're all right as long as we are not in a storm. But when, when I get sick, doctor done gave me a bad report. I done lost my job. Ain't got no money. I want to know where is your faith? As long as we got a pocket full of money, got a job to go to, get a paycheck every Friday, everybody in the house is healthy, don't have to go to the doctor, all oh, my faith is in God. But as soon as the storm creep up in your house, you start saying, Lord, how am I going to make it? Lord, what's going to happen next? Lord, will you come get me out of this? I want to I wanna know where is your faith. Yeah. Amen. And see, most of us just talk faith. We really don't have it because as soon as something negative happened in our lives, that's when we really begin, like these disciples, we said, look, I'm perishing and I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. And I've told you last Sunday that no matter what situation confronts you, I stop by to tell you, if you got Jesus on board, the storm ain't so bad. You got to know even in this text that Jesus can handle the storm in your life. Lord, have mercy. Let me hear him get out of this. The Bible says that faith, watch this now, stay with me, is the substance. And I want you to, I want you to hang on this word substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'm trying to teach you something here about faith. It is the evidence of what I can't see. Now, 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 anybody, anybody ever been in the kitchen? When, when your grandmother or your mama was cooking a cake? Come on, I'm going to just give you a, a, a good 
practical illustration here. You, you ever been in a, you look, look, when your mama, I mean, she's stirring up the batter and all that kind of stuff. And when mama get ready to put the cake in the oven, she lets you lick the spoon. Anybody, am I talking to anybody? My mama lets you lick the spoon. So you got to understand what was on the spoon was the substance of what you hope for. Listen, I don't have to have the cake. Baby, just give me the substance. I don't have to know how I'm going to get out. But if you're just going to give me some substance, I know hope is on the way. Listen, the cake hadn't even come out of the oven yet. But I got a joy just licking what was on the spoon. Because I knew that what was on the spoon was in the oven. And when I got through licking the spoon, I hoped for a piece of cake. And when the cake came out, everything was all right. concerning the kingdom of God. There are things concerning the church. There are things concerning Christ. There are things concerning the word of God that's a mystery. There are a lot of times you read the Bible, you don't understand what you're reading. Have I got a witness? But if God said it, I got to learn to follow and walk by faith. Even when I can't comprehend it, I don't understand it, don't know how it's going to turn out, but by faith, I keep on walking. That's it. There are a lot of things about God that has not been revealed. And you've heard me say this. When you, when, when you, if you ever learn all there is to know about God, well, then he'll cease to be God. Are y'all in here? But there are things about God and there are things about ministry and there are things about, about, uh, about kingdom that, that had not yet been revealed because even in this Bible, the Bible said that eyes have not seen, ear have not heard, nor have it entered in the heart of men the things that God has prepared for us. Everything you see has not yet been revealed. God is getting ready to do a new thing. God is getting ready to propel us to another dimension. But our job is, uh, if we're going to follow Christ, uh, it's got to be by faith. Most church folk, and I've had more folk to tell me in church past, I can't see it. If you can see it, you don't need faith. And see, that's our problem. We're trying to wait till we see something. And that's why God can't use us. That's why God can't take us to another dimension because we're sitting around because we can't see it. That's carnality. And so therefore the just to live by faith. We got to walk by faith. And, and because without faith it's impossible to please him. Uh, uh, it, it takes, and, and, and let me tell you this, it don't take a whole lot of faith. Matter of fact, this Bible says, anybody ever seen a mustard seed? Preach, Pastor. If you had one mustard seed, you can't even hardly see the seed. And Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, he said, you can speak to the mountain and it will remove. I'm trying to tell you, if you got enough faith, when storms come in your life, do like Jesus did. The Bible said that he spoke to the storm. You got to learn how to speak to your storm. These disciples, they were, they were following Jesus by faith. And this is what messed me up right here. I found out that, 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 that when Jesus and Matthew called them to follow him, they, they followed him not, not part-time, but they was with Jesus daily. Are y'all in here? And so being with Jesus... They spent time with him. Uh -huh. They walked with him. They talked with him. 
they heard Jesus preach the gospel of the kingdom. They heard Jesus teaching the word of God. Watch this. They experience close and, and, and firsthand the miracles of Jesus. Are y'all here? And they experience this on a daily basis. Every day they heard the word. Every day they, they heard Jesus teach. Every day they, they, they experienced Jesus working miracles in the lives of people. Now this is what messed me up when Jesus had to ask them in the text, where is your faith? Now if there's anybody faith should be increased, it ought to be those who are following Christ. Let, let me tell you something. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. If you come to church every Sunday, every Wednesday night, you in Sunday school, you in Bible class, your faith every week ought to be increased. You ought to be better today in faith than you was last week because you hear it every Sunday. Follow Jesus. But instead of their faith being increased, Somewhere their faith were diminished because he had to ask them the question, where is your faith? Are y'all here? So in this text, look at the text real close because their, their faith had been shaken. Their faith had been weakened. Matter of fact, their faith was gone. Can I tell you why they, why, why, why they didn't have no more faith? Because they allowed fear to creep in. Let me take this mic and stand up here and tell you this. You cannot. Faith and fear would not live in the same heart. If you got faith in God, fear cannot come in. But if you allow fear to come in, faith will get out. And what causes us to be fearful is the storms that we encounter trying to get to the other side. I said last Sunday, we're trying to get to the other side. And trying to get to the other side, we're going to have some storms in our lives. But when the storm comes, don't become so fearful. If you look at the text, in verse 23, the Bible says that when the storm came, the water that was supposed to keep them safe on the water were now filling up the boat. Are y'all in here? And what they said were their lives were now in jeopardy. In other words, if we don't do something quick, we are going to lose our lives. Somebody came to themselves and says, I tell you what, wake up Jesus. And look at the text because they said, master, master. And one translation said this, careth thou not that we are perishing? Do you care? How many of us know Jesus cares? You, you ought to high five somebody and say, Jesus cares. I don't care how storm, how dark it is. Lightning flashing, thundering war, water filling up your boat. Jesus cares about you and what you're going through. Watch this. And they, but they allowed fear to overtake them. How many of us know that fear is a tactic or a tool of the enemy? If the devil can make you scared. In other words, let me, let me say this. If the devil uh, uh, can just make you think, you ain't going to make it. If he can just make you think even before you go to the doctor, well, I got this sickness. The doctor going to tell me I got cancer. You scared even before you go. And the problem is fear overtook these disciples. And faith went out and fear came in. And so, so in this text, what Jesus is, what, what really what this, this story is going to tell us is how to handle your storms. Right. Is there anybody in here want to know how to handle a storm? Yeah. 
And I ain't talking about the rain coming down outside. I ain't talking about the light. I'm talking about a storm in your life. When you sick, baby, that's a storm. When you ain't got no money to pay your bill, that's a storm. When the doctor give you a bad report, that's a storm. I'm trying to tell you, you got to know how to handle your storms. Watch this. Watch this. I want to encourage us to do like these disciples. This is how you handle your storm. Look at verse 24. Because in verse 23, the storm came and they, their lives was in jeopardy and they, they thought they was perishing. But in verse 24, watch what they said in verse 24. And they came to him and awoke him and said, Master, Master, we are perishing. Uh-huh. I shared this with you last Sunday, how to handle your storm. The first thing you need to do is wake up Jesus. That, what that really says to me, Brother Art McClone, don't try to handle the storm on your own. If you do research on these disciples, I showed you that they were fishermen and had been out on the sea many times, but this was a storm they could not handle. And so what happened was they woke up Jesus. And they said, Jesus, if you don't get up and do something, we're going to perish. Jesus, if you don't get up and do something, we're going to lose our lives. Don't you know that if you got Jesus on board, that that water would have had to drown Jesus? If Jesus is on board, you are not going under. You are not going to drown. Water may creep in, but you ain't going to drown. The Bible says... When they woke up Jesus, they said, Master, Master. In other words, they were really saying, you, 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 you got the power. You, you got the authority. You got the ability to handle what's going on in our lives. Somebody here know that you've lived long enough that when storms come, you have to give it to Jesus. And when Jesus, when they called Jesus, the Bible said that he calmed the storm. And not only did he calm the storm, but look at the text because he got them calm. How many of us know that when you're about to flip out and about to lose your mind, I'm talking about you're about to lose your sanity, you're about to go crazy, but when Jesus, he calmed not only the storm in your life, but he'll calm you. Oh, that got right by you so quick. I'm trying to tell you, sometimes people don't understand when you're in a storm, why you so cool, calm, and collect. All because of Jesus. Come in the storm in my life. And the Bible says in that verse 25, after, after calming the storm and getting them calm down where they could re- recompose themselves, he, he set them down and said, I want to ask y'all a question. He says, where is your faith? And there are three things I want to leave with us today. There are three things that I want to leave. I ain't, I ain't hollering today. I'm going to holler, but I ain't hollering. I'm going to holler, but I ain't hollering. Because I want us to know how to handle storms. I want you to write these three things down. I want to, I want to, there are three things I want to lift about faith. That we may know how not to allow fear to come in. First, write this down. These 12 men who were following Jesus should have had faith, watch this, in the word or the words of Jesus. It's right in the text. I'm not making this up. The words of Jesus is able to comfort us. The word of Jesus is able, help me Lord, to change the situation. The words of Jesus is able to calm us and the storms in our lives. So you got to have faith in what Jesus is able to say. Look at verse 24 because in verse 24, the Bible said when he got up, watch what he said. He rebuked the wind and the raging water. Jesus, those were the words he spoke. 
You got to believe if Jesus speak it, it's going to get better. I don't know about you, but when I got a storm, I want to hear from Jesus. I, I don't, I don't want to hear from Creflo Dollar. I don't want to hear from T.D. Jakes. I don't even want to hear from Pastor Langston. When I got a storm in my life, Jesus, speak to my storm because I know that if you speak, help me, Lord Jesus. And look what happened when Jesus, watch what happened when he spoke in verse 24. And the Bible said, and, they, and the, the, the raging water and the winds, watch what it says, they cease. And there was a calm. Jesus spoke the words. And things changed. I'm reminded on one situation where Jesus spoke some words and a man that was dead got up. I'm trying to tell you, if you let Jesus speak, look, sick folk will get healed. If you let Jesus speak, blind folk will begin to see. Lame man will get up and walk. Dumb will begin to talk. If you let Jesus talk, devils will be cast out. Dead men will get up. I'm trying to tell you, right in the midst of your storm, you ought to say, speak, Lord. Watch this. When I'm in a storm, I want to hear from the Lord. Why, why do you show up every Sunday? Is it just to do what you do? Is it just to usher? Is it just to count some money? Is it just to do a devotion? Is it just to preach? Is it, I mean, or do you show up really to hear a word? Because you left a storm at home to get here to, to learn how to handle a storm in your life. Most of us, we come to church on Sunday morning, the word go right over our head. And then when you go back to the storm, you say, man, how am I? Did you just like no disciples? Somebody have to ask you, where is your faith? And what I don't understand, we tell people every day of our lives when the storm is not in our house, baby, hold on. Baby, hang in there. Baby, it's going to get better. High fives your neighbor and say, neighbor, talk to yourself. The same stuff you told somebody else, you ought to tell yourself. So the first thing you got to learn how to do is you got to have faith in the words of Jesus. If Jesus speak to your storm, I'm trying to tell you, your storm will become calm. Somebody ought to say, Lord, speak to my mind. My mind is disturbed. Lord, speak to my heart. My heart is broken. Lord, I need you to speak. Because if you speak, I can handle this storm. In other words, you must depend upon the word. Watch this. To lead, guide, and direct. Watch this. And navigate your path through the storm. And see, the problem is we don't, we don't turn to the word. When we're in a storm. Most of us them have got so smart now. And we got so much education. And we so intelligent. And we'll tell God in a minute, I got this. When you ain't got nothing. So that's the first thing. And I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to get out of this. That's the first thing. You got to have faith in the words of Jesus. Secondly, write this down. You got to have faith, not only in the words of Jesus, but Reverend Jones, you got to have faith in the wisdom of Jesus. Can I tell you what wisdom is? Wisdom is having the knowledge. Wisdom is having the insight. Since you didn't understand that, let me tell you what it really means. Wisdom is just simply having some good old common sense. You ain't got to be deep. You ain't got to be profound. Wisdom is having good sense and judgment. Watch this. On knowing how to handle difficulty and tough situations. You can have knowledge, but if you ain't got the wisdom, you can't handle it. My mama had an old saying, uh, Sister April, when I was at home, she said, she said, you ought to have sense with it. 
She said, y'all going to school and get all that book knowledge, but you ain't got no sense with it. And really, what my mama was saying was, we just got a bunch of educated. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all said it. You can't say I said y'all said it. Some of us got knowledge, but we, look, the, our four parents didn't have education, but they had good wisdom. And we got more education now than we ever had. I'm going to tell you, and it's hard to deal with some highly educated folks, especially in church. Because they know more than everybody else. I know this sermon is going to be talked about this week. And so he says you got to have faith in the wisdom of in other words, you got to watch this. He was really saying you got to have faith that Jesus know how to handle what he need to handle. Jesus is omniscience. He's omniscient, which really means he's all knowing. Jesus has the wisdom. And when we look at verse 23 and verse 24, look at it real close because I want to tell you the fact that the ship would not fill with water, their life was in jeopardy, and they was about to perish. Using my sanctified imagination, they said, wake up Jesus, watch this, and let us see if he know how to handle this stone. Yeah. Jesus has the wisdom to get it done. He know how to handle all of life problems. Whatever your storm is, Jesus can handle it. He has the know-how. Jesus has the knowledge. He has the wisdom to handle your storm. No matter what life confronts you with, Jesus has, has the wisdom to do it. Matter of fact, it was Solomon who was the wisest man who ever lived, said it in Proverbs. He said, in all of thy ways, acknowledge him because he know how to direct your path. Getting ready to close. If I'm going to handle this storm, I got to have faith in the words of Jesus. I got to have faith in the wisdom of Jesus. But lastly, I got to have faith in the works of Jesus. His works, what he's able to do. I have, in other words, I got confidence in what I'm going through. Watch this. Jesus can work it out. Am I just talking to myself? Am I talking to anybody in here that I'm talking about, I ain't talking about just had a headache. But you've been in a show enough storm and you call on Jesus and Jesus worked it out for you. I'm trying to tell you, somebody know that he can work it out. He can make a way out of no way. Jesus can do the impossible. Jesus can work it out. You ought to high five somebody and say, neighbor, whatever you are going through, you ought to have confidence in the works of Jesus. Somebody ought to just shout, work it, work it, work it. Because if you turn it over to Jesus, he'll start working on your behalf. And if Jesus work on your behalf, he'll work it out. Anybody know he can work it? Anybody know he can work it? I'm trying to tell you, when it seems like all hope is gone, it seems like you're down for the count, it looks like you ain't coming out, you ought to say, Jesus, work it. When it looked like they were perishing, looked like they were going to lose their lives, Jesus got up and began to work the stone. Have I got a witness? And let me tell you something, Jesus... Help me, Lord. Watch this. I'm going to blow your mind right here. In one translation, said Jesus said, peace be still. Let me tell you something. Jesus didn't speak to the stone. Jesus spoke to peace. Jesus said, let's have some peace in this ship. I'm trying to tell you, every now and then, when Jesus starts speaking, he'll just speak peace in a confused situation. I don't know about anybody else, but when it seems like, look, my life is out of control, I just need some peace. 
It may be chaotic on the outside, but on the inside, there's a peace that passes all understanding. I'm trying to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you ought to put your faith in what Jesus is able to do. And somebody know he's able to do all things and do all things well. Jesus is able to bring you up and out of the storm. Jesus is able to give peace where there's confusion. Jesus is able to give joy. And I'm closing. I want to tell somebody in here today, whatever the devil does, and I'm closing, whatever the devil does, he meant it for bad. But you take this home with you. God going to work it for your good. You, you, you got you to stand on the works of Christ. Look, and I want to tell you, the best way to know what Christ will do is what he has done. And somebody know, when you begin to look back over your life and see how God has worked some things out in your life, you know he'll do it today. If you know God has worked some stuff out in your life, come on and shout. Give God glory. Give God a praise for working it out. I'm finished, I'm finished, I'm finished. Let us stand on our feet, I'm finished. But we got to have faith in the words, the wisdom, and the works of Jesus. It was Jesus who handled this stone. It wasn't these boys. They were smart, they were articulate, they were fishermen. They know how to navigate storms and water, but this particular time, they couldn't handle it. And there's some stuff going to happen in your life. You can't handle it. Don't care how smart you are. And I said this last Sunday, life is lived in three stages. These, these three, these 12 men were walking with Jesus. They was riding in a ship with Jesus, but yet they still encountered storm. I come to tell somebody in here today, you can walk with Jesus every day of your life and the storm's still going to show up. You're still going to have some storms. But our problem is, we fail to have faith in what Jesus is able to do. I want Jesus to speak to my stone. I want to have faith in the wisdom. And the reason I have faith because I know that whatever the storm is, he can handle it. When the doctor say no, Jesus can still say yes. I'm talking about when the doctor says I've done all I can do and I can't do nothing else. It's just right for Jesus. Jesus, and look, listen, and I want to tell you this. You've heard me say this. Whatever you're going through, I want you to take this home with you. Whatever you're going through, that whatever Jesus don't get you out of, so help me preach in here. He'll get in with you. If those Hebrew boys who was in the fire, he didn't take them out, but he got in with them. And I'm trying to tell you, when the storm comes, if he don't get you out, he'll get in with you. And if Jesus get in with you, you can handle the storm. He didn't get Daniel out of the lion's den, but he got in with him. I'm just trying to tell somebody, that's how you handle your storms. Stop cracking up and stop getting frustrated when storms come. They going to come. But I got to turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you to handle my storm. The door is open.